Well, uh, hi again. Um, so uh, in the previous part of this video, uh, we uh, we were looking at this equation, uh, Schrodinger kind of equation, epsilon y double prime equals uh, q of x, which is some function of x, which is non-zero in the interval we are considering, uh, q of x times y, where again y is the uh, dependent variable. Um, and everything is suitably non-dimensionalized uh, and prime is a derivative with respect to the independent variable x and epsilon is a small parameter in the problem. And we derived a WKB uh, approximate solution to this particular equation uh, which reads uh, that y is some constant c1 times qx to the power of minus one fourth then e to the power of one divided by square root, square root epsilon integral of square root of q s ds where s is a dummy variable of integration over an interval x plus a constant c2 times again the same factor qx to the power of minus one fourth and then e to the power of minus of this particular solution which is minus one over square root epsilon integral of square root q s ds um, and, and so far uh, we don't know we, we haven't specified the boundary condition so these constants are as yet undetermined um, so let's look at a specific simple example of um, uh, instance of this equation and see and compare our WKB solution to uh, the exact solution that we can obtain in that case. Um, so, so let's just look at a specific example uh, which uh, is uh, epsilon y double prime equals minus of y um, and let's specify the boundary conditions like y of 0 is 0 and y of 1 is 1. So uh, so again, this is a kind of equation that we can solve exactly. Uh, and so we can compare our WKB solution to our exact solution. Uh, and in this case, uh, notice that Q of X is just a constant, which we've taken to be minus of one. So let's let's see what the WKB solution looks like um, to this equation. So all we have to do is substitute this QX into this expression um, and then solve for the two constants given those boundary conditions. So, um, so notice that, um, Okay, so first of all, we have this factor. Uh, let's look at this factor first, which is we need to evaluate this factor, which is which is occurring in both these exponentials. So an integral of square root of qs, which is square root of minus one ds, right? So this is the uh, factor appearing in this integral. Um, so square root of minus one is the unit imaginary number. And uh, we'll be talking more about complex numbers in, um, uh, in uh, re, uh, uh, very soon. Uh, but for now, we can just take a square root of minus 1 as i, which is the unit imaginary number. And so this gives us i times integral over x of dx, which is just i times x. Okay. And this, this happens for both of them, except that in one case, we have a plus sign and the other case, the minus sign. And we also have a minus 1 to the power minus 1 fourth here. But this is just some constant. So uh, qx to the power of uh, minus 1 fourth, in our case, will be minus 1 to the power of minus 1 fourth. And we can just absorb this in this constant c1 and define a new constant c1 tilde because this is just some constant complex number, for instance. Um, so, so what we have overall is uh, an expression which looks like the solution looks like y is some constant c1 um, maybe we can just call this c1 tilde c2 tilde and call this new constant where we have absorbed this entire q minus one to the power minus one fourth into the c1 tilde and call a new constant c1 so we have c1 uh, e to the power of minus sorry plus one divided by square root epsilon i x which comes from this factor and then we have a c2 e to the power of minus uh, i x divided by square root epsilon right and again uh, what we can now do is uh, uh, we can use Euler's expression which is expand this exponential as a cosine of uh, cosine of x divided by square root epsilon plus i times sine of x divided by square root epsilon and redefine the constants to actually express the solution in the form of some new constants um, which we can call as uh, b1 uh, times cosine uh, then we have so this is something we did when we were working with one of the algebraic equations before so we'll have a cosine x divided by square root epsilon plus some constant b2 times sine of x divided by square root epsilon okay so now we need to find out these constants b1 and b2 uh, so boundary conditions is that y at y at x equals 0 is 0 
So 0 is now when x is 0, this factor is 0 and cosine of 0 is 1. So that gives us b1 is 0. The second boundary condition is that y1 is 1. So 1 is uh, b1 we already know is 0. So b2 is sine at x equals 1 is 1 divided by square root epsilon. And that gives us b, b2 is 1 divided by sine of 1 divided by square root epsilon. And so we have our overall solution, uh, which is just uh, y is sine of x divided by square root epsilon divided by sine of 1 divided by square root epsilon. Okay. Um, now, if we, if we compare this with the exact solution, um, notice that we'll end up getting exactly this particular equation because uh, the exact solution to this uh, equation will be obtained by substituting y as e to the power of some parameter s times x and that will give us, um, so maybe we can try that. So the exact solution for this will be obtained by making the ansatz that y is e to the power of some parameter constant s times x. And so uh, y double prime will be s square times e to the power of sx. And if you put it in the, put it back into the equation, we'll have e s squared is minus of one, and therefore s is plus minus um, one divided by square root epsilon times i. Right. And so if we go back and substitute uh, the value of s in this in this particular ansatz, we'll get uh, y as e to the power of um, i divided by square root epsilon x times some constant uh, c1 plus c2 e to the power of minus i x divided by square root epsilon, uh, which is exactly this particular equation. So the exact solution will match uh, the solution that we obtained from WKB approximation. Um, and in particular, um, what does this solution look like? Uh, so notice that this factor is a constant. So this serves as the amplitude of a sinusoidal kind of a solution. And uh, so for instance, for some parameter uh, epsilon, we might have a solution which looks like this. So for x equals 0, we'll have 0. So they'll always start here. So for some epsilon, we might have this solution. If we make epsilon larger, uh, if we make epsilon smaller, uh, our amplitude uh, 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 our amplitude could increase, and and what what will happen here in particular is that our oscillations will become more and more rapid. So, for instance, for uh, if we may make epsilon twice, we might have a solution which looks like this, oscillate even more rapidly than than the one that we're drawing before. And so, if we make epsilon smaller and smaller, we'll have a sine sinusoidal solution with whose wavelength which is the distance between two crests uh, or troughs or two peaks and valleys the distance between them is we can call that as a wavelength uh, that decreases uh, with epsilon or rather we can think of it as, as the period of the sinusoidal oscillation which decreases with epsilon. Um, so, so notice how this solution is very different from the boundary layer phenomenon we were considering where at one or the other of the boundaries, we have a sharp discontinuity in the solution. Whereas in this case, epsilon is deciding uh, the period of oscillation of a sinusoidal kind of a solution. Um, so uh, so th this, this kind of an analysis is for the WKB method is called the, a dispersive analysis of a solution. And whereas the previous one is the boundary layer phenomenon that we considered. Um, so, uh, so hope this example gives uh, a flavor of both kinds of uh, solutions that the WKB can be applied uh, to um, and uh, yeah so hope to see you soon again I uh, hope this was of some use so thanks for watching